The movie starts when we meet Kimberly, a college student who is about to hit the road with her best friend Shayna and two other friends. While driving, Kimberly begins to feel that something is wrong, and not long after, a log from a truck breaks the safety cable, causing a catastrophic accident resulting in several fatalities, including Kimberly herself, who was hit by a second truck. However, it was all a premonition, and realizing that things are repeating exactly the same way, Kimberly blocks her car across the road, preventing other cars from entering the highway. One of these cars belongs to the police officer Thomas, who gets out of the patrol car to question the girl. Kimberly says that an accident is about to happen upon seeing the truck from her vision. To everyone's surprise, the accident indeed occurs. The girl still forgets about the second truck from her premonition but is saved by the officer. Unfortunately, her friends are not as fortunate and do not survive. All the survivors go to the police station. Kimberly is interrogated and says she had a premonition. They remember the events from a year ago when Alex saved his friends from the plane explosion. However, Eugene thinks it's just superstition. Besides them, Rory, the businesswoman Kat, Nora, and her son Tim, Isabella, who is pregnant, and the recently lottery winner Evan are all those who escaped death. The survivors don't believe Kimberly and leave. However, on that same day while Evan was cooking, his ring falls into the sink drain. He reaches in to try to retrieve it, and that's when the frying pan catches fire. With his hand stuck, he can't put it out, and a fire starts in the apartment. He manages to free himself in time to exit the apartment and go down the emergency stairs. However, he slips on the noodles he had thrown out the window moments before and is hit by the stairs. We see Sheriff Thomas researching on the internet, trying to understand what happened after Alex's premonition. We find out that after the events of the first film, while walking down the street with his girlfriend Clear, a brick fell on his head, causing his death. Meanwhile, Kimberly is also researching and discovers that Clear is still alive but confined to a psychiatric hospital. She goes there to ask for Clear's help in escaping death. However, Clear says it's impossible. Even she had to check herself into that place and stay away from everyone to avoid risks. After Clear explains that death will come after them in the order they were supposed to die in the accident, Kimberly argues back, saying that her friends were the first to die in real life, but in her premonition, they would be the last. Clear deduces that the entity is taking its victims by reversing the list. In other words, Kimberly should have been the first, but by saving herself, death moved on to Evan. Later, Kimberly encounters Thomas, and the officer says he believes her, but is interrupted by the girl who sees pigeons attacking her. However, it's not real, and she realizes that Nora and her son will be the ones to suffer this attack. Nora takes her son to the dentist, and the boy is about to get a filling. The problem is that in this office, there is an aquarium, and the air outlet is being blocked by one of the fish, causing a water leak. This results in the shutdown of the oxygen cylinder that is pumping air to Tim. Moreover, a toy falls into the boy's mouth, preventing him from breathing completely. Luckily, he is saved by the dentist's assistant. Tim and his mother leave the office, and as they reach the street, he spots some pigeons and runs to scare them away. With the commotion of the pigeons, one of the workers working nearby drops a glass that falls on the boy. Clear appears and tells Kimberly that she will help her. She leads them to William Bloodworth. The coroner reveals that only a new life on the list can make death give up on pursuing them. Kimberly remembers that there was a pregnant woman in her premonition who was also saved when she intervened in the accident. The sheriff obtains the license plate of the pregnant woman's van. He quickly sends some officers to arrest the woman, intending to keep her safe until the baby is born. The group of survivors gathers at Thomas's apartment, where Clear reveals the plan to them. Every time Kimberly has a premonition, they will call the rest of the group and alert them to the danger. However, Clear says that they all must sleep in the same place and take turns watching the location. Nora, even though she's next on the list, says she will leave and doesn't fear death because if it takes her, she will be reunited with her husband and son. Eugene follows her, still not believing in this premonition story. In the elevator with them is a man carrying prosthetics with hooks. Rory sees a shadow of what appears to be a man with hooks, and even though he's not the one having the premonitions, they believe this could be a sign. Thomas calls Nora and tells her to avoid a man with hooks. The woman panics and tries to get out of the elevator. However, her hair gets caught on one of the hooks, giving just enough time for the elevator door to close with her still trapped. Eugene tries to press the emergency button, but the panel explodes. As the elevator starts to ascend, Nora hangs by her head. Cat and Clear rush to help, but cannot save her. Terrified, Eugene finally believes and returns to the officer's apartment. 
The group then decides to go to the police station where Isabella is being held. On the way, they notice that due to Alex saving his friends in the first film, it caused a series of events that saved the lives of the characters in the second film. Since they didn't die when they were supposed to, death caused the highway accident to take them all. Isabella goes into labor, forcing the officer to take her to the hospital. However, on the way, the van she was in almost collides with the car of the other survivors, which skids on the road after a flat tire. Isabella goes to the hospital, and the other's car crashes into pipes in the middle of a farm. Eugene's lung is pierced by one of them while Kat narrowly escapes. The group assists Eugene and puts him in an ambulance. At that moment, a TV station's car almost hits the son of the farm owners, saved by Rory. The same car parks on top of a pile of rocks, puncturing the fuel tank. Gasoline leaks and flows down the pipe to where the survivor's Jeep is. Firefighters arrive to remove the log blocking Cat from exiting the vehicle. However, they cut the front part right above the pressure-triggered airbag device, sending the girl's head into the pipe. The cigarette the woman was holding falls onto the gasoline, causing an explosion that throws barbed wire onto Rory. In the hospital, the oxygen from the cylinders that should keep Eugene alive is cut off. Furthermore, the plug of the distress call equipment comes loose, preventing him from calling for help. At this moment, Isabella's baby is born, and when everything seemed to be fine, Kimberly remembers that Isabella would escape the highway accident even without her interference. In other words, the baby's birth doesn't change anything. Kimberly has another premonition and sees someone with injured hands drowning in a lake. Clear deduces it's Eugene. Upon reaching his room, a spark from the plug causes an explosion due to the excess oxygen in the air, reaching Clear and Eugene. Kimberly realizes that she is the person who must drown. If she is resuscitated, it would be accepted by the entity as a new life, stopping the sequence of deaths. She takes an ambulance and plunges into the lake. Thomas manages to pull her out, and the girl is revived by a doctor. A few days later, we see her and Thomas on that same farm as before. Apparently, they managed to thwart Death's plans and were invited by the farm owner as a way of thanking them for saving his son. It's when they realize that it was Rory's interference by saving Brian that altered the order of the list, and the movie ends with the barbecue exploding, killing Brian right in front of them.